Hi there, it's Paige here from the impactcopywriter.com. And today in this video, we're going to do a mini sales page review for dealwithgrowth.com. So um, this submission comes from Jeremy from dealwithgrowth.com. Um, we're gonna be reviewing a sales page slash homepage. So it's kind of sales page style, but it is still a homepage selling email automation consulting to Shopify merchants. Um, who are selling in the five to six figure something. Um, so I'm not sure if if this meant that he that these these Shopify shops are selling like five to six figures per month or per year or whatnot. I'm going to assume per month because um, this means they're more established and they're they're quite successful and have some some channels, some sales channels set up. Um, so the stage of awareness we didn't know um, based on the information provided on this sales page. But because this sales page is getting organic traffic and they're ranking well for terms like Shopify marketing consultant, Shopify email marketing consultant, I'm going to hypothesize that these people are in the solution awareness. So they know what their problem is. They know solutions are available and they're aware they're looking for solutions. They're aware of certain solutions that are available. They're just not aware that dealwithgrowth.com is one of those solutions. So they're they're at the the high end of that solution awareness and then by the end of this sales page slash home page they should be in the product aware slash most aware stages so i'm also going to assume that their level of sophistication is somewhere in the intermediate to advanced range so because these are experienced shopify merchants they're already making you know five to six figures per month um, in product sales, then they're not newbies. So we can talk to them on a, on a different level. Um, so always, I don't want to assume too high. So I'm going to, and do the advanced. So we don't want to talk above them because, you know, we need them to understand. So we're going to assume they're at this intermediate level. So they're going to be familiar with terms like, um, customer lifetime value and win back campaigns and all of that. Now, the primary issue, um, that Jeremy has this with this page is does it ref does the copy reflect the voice of the customer and is it specific enough to get them to take action and I think he used um, something like to um, like slam on that uh, contact button or that CTA so before we dive in and look at the copy first I just want to back up and and cover a little bit of background on voice of customer for all you all you people who um, who don't really know what we mean by that. All right, so the voice of customer is basically your best prospects slash past customers experiences reflected back to them on the page. That's it. It means your page reflects um, what they're going through. So you're using their words, their daily experiences, their aspirations, their problems, their pains, their objections, all of that is based on real experiences from either your best prospects or past customers. So my point is you're basing the entire sales page on what your best prospects are really going through, their real experiences. So how do you know if your sales page reflects the voice of the customer? Well, if you're guessing, if you're writing what you think people need to hear, what you think they're going through, then you're not reflecting the voice of the customer. You're guessing, you're making assumptions. So what I want you to do is to go find out. Now, as a general rule, um, if you can't back up around 80% of what you're claiming, what you're writing, um, of the messages that you're hitting on your sales page, you can't back those up with actual quotes or snippets from interview transcripts or stories that you've um, grabbed for, through online conversation mining um, with things that are shared in Facebook groups or on subreddits. If you can't back any of that up with actual data or most of that up with actual data, then you haven't done enough voice of customer research. Um, like Jeremy here, he's, he's concerned, like, is this reflecting the voice of the customer? If you have that doubt, then odds are you don't have enough data. You need to go out and do more research. Um, so the top three methods or my preferred methods are interviews with either past customers or people on your list who haven't bought from you yet. 
interviews are a huge goldmine for voice of customer data. Um, that's really where you can dig into problems, dig into what they're doing. You can um, go so much deeper than you can with any other type of voice of customer research method. Um, second would be survey. So if you have a list, you can run something like a five, four, five, six question survey. You won't get as um, the data won't be as good because people are not going to sit down and write like a three paragraph response to your question. Um, but you'll get a lot of if you have a big list then you'll get a lot of data to work with. Um, and this can be a great way to like validate some of the things you're finding in your interviews. OK, so other people are going through this. This is probably um, something in common that most of my best prospects have in common. Um, and the final one is online conversation mining. Um, this is like where you go into subreddits, Quora, Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, wherever your best prospects are hanging out, you're going to go into those places and just look to see what's being discussed, what's being said, what people are sharing. Um, and I call that online conversation mining. Um, so that's actually a great method to use if you don't have any customers yet, if you don't have access to best to um, to prospects, if you don't have a list, then you can always start with online conversation mining. Um, I recommend using all three if at all possible. Um, because when you triangulate your data, it just means the insights that you're that you're finding are more reliable. Um, so do as many of these as you can. Um, and I put them kind of in order of priority. So if I have to choose, I always want to go with interviews first because I can get the best data. Then I want surveys because those are people who actually follow me um, and people who are going to be exposed to my messages, like people on my email list, for example, and then online conversation mining um, as a way to kind of follow what's being said in, in groups and such. All right. So now we're going to take a look at the actual copy on the deal with growth page. Now, because Jeremy's mostly concerned with voice of customer and with being specific enough to take action, um, that's primarily what I'm going to focus. So this is a mini review. This is a small snapshot of what I would do in a full sales page review. And we can talk about that in a little while. Um, but I've made some notes here. And I'm just going to run through them and talk you through some of the changes I would recommend and why I would recommend those. Um, and again, we're focusing on uh, reflecting the voice of the customer and then specific specificity and then a few other things that just kind of jumped out at me as I went through the page. All right, let's get started. The first thing I want to look at is the hero because the hero plays a really important part in getting people um, invested in going down your sales page. So we want to make sure we spend like plenty of time uh, working on the hero section, specifically the headline to make sure that we're really grabbing people and we're making them stop and get interested in the page. So right now we've got turn your Shopify store into a profit machine. OK, that's that's pretty good. We're focusing on benefits. Um, we're mentioning we're, you know, we're message matching. Um, we we covered earlier that this is ranking well for Shopify email marketing consulting. Um, and, and, and a term like this. So we definitely want to make sure we're matching those messages. So Shopify um, and mentioning email marketing. So we make sure we want to 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 match those. Now, one thing here that this doesn't really stop me in my tracks. Um, so we could brainstorm, you know, 20 more headlines. Um, how can we create curiosity? How can we um, make people be like, whoa, I need to find out about this, right? Um, so it needs to be something with pizzazz, um, even using a little bit of art, uh, using headline uh, formulas to just brainstorm and work and, and, and tweak and work and tweak and work and tweak until you find something that's like, oh, wow, like this is going to get them to stop. I feel really good about this. Um, so, you know, my main comment is, can we push people? Can we push this so that people are stopping in their tracks? Something um, I didn't spend a whole lot of time brainstorming stuff. And a lot of times um, you'll want to work on your big idea because your headline um, ties into your big idea. And that requires knowing the research so that so that I understand the customer. So um, so if you're working on that, make sure you go back to your research and, and, and figure out what is the big idea that's going to tie through you know the entirety of your page what is that thread that story that you're going to to un unravel there 
Um, so just for example, turn your emails into automated product sales. Um, that doesn't have a lot of pizzazz. Turn your emails into cash. That kind of makes me wonder like, what? Like, what are they talking about? Maybe I should find out. So that's just some examples um, of how you could start to play around with some things and really trying to reach that that um, that headline that's that's communicating what you do, but in a way that creates curiosity and makes people want to stop and find out more. OK, so moving on to the subhead, drive more revenue, generate more repeat purchases and delight your customers with deal growth, deal with growths done for you, email automation services. So I've highlighted delight your customers, um, which is the, the note is, is this something prospects say they want? Um, where, you know, we're covering, I like things in three. So I like that we have drive more revenue, generate more repeat purchases and X. Um, but we make, we want to make sure we're hitting those like top three outcomes that your prospect wants. So is delight your customers? Okay. It may be important, but is it one of the top three? I can't answer that because I haven't done the research, but that's something that you need to go back and, and look at and ask yourself. Um, another note here was we're not really qualifying. OK, we've, we've mentioned Shopify up here. Now, if we had a headline and we remove Shopify, then we want to make sure Shopify is somewhere here in the subhead so that we're message matching. Um, but we're not really qualifying who this page is for um, right now. It could be any Shopify owner, but that's not true with what we know about who this page um, is trying to attract. So Shopify owners who are already making five to six figures in monthly revenue or yearly revenue or whatever it is. But that qualifier who are already making X amount of dollars per month um, and maybe even you could qualify. They're already making X amount of figures per month and they want to be making seven figures per month or something like that. So that qualifier is missing here. And I would encourage you to, to be more specific with the with the subhead. And so that when your ideal prospects are on this page, they know that you're talking to them. And when someone who's on this page is not your ideal prospect, they know you're not talking to them. So that'll help you get more qualified leads that way. Moving on to the buttons. Um, one comment here is get in touch is kind of vague. Um, I would encourage you to be more concrete, uh, more specific with what happens next. So I know that this leads to the um, the consultation form on your site. So could you say something like schedule a strategy session, schedule a consultation? I'm not a huge fan of the word consultation because it feels like they're not going to get anything out of it. That is just kind of a sales pitch. That's my opinion. Right. So you need to make sure you're you're measuring that against your voice of customer research. Um, but something more concrete, like a strategy session or a, a blueprint session. I don't know what you could call it. You could get re really creative here. Uh, but the point is, can you make this CTA more concrete and more specific so that they know what's going to happen next? All right, let's move on to the to the first section here. Growing a profitable Shopify store is hard work. You've hustled your ass off to build a decent e-commerce business, jumping from role to role and doing everything yourself. Now I've highlighted decent because I was curious if that's something like businesses would describe their Shopify store as. Would they say they're decent or does that sound like they're not giving themselves enough credit? I mean, would they claim that their stores are amazing? And they don't know why they're not doing better than they are. Um, so that's something you want to run against your Shopify store. I mean, your voice of customer research. I've also highlighted roll to roll because this is an opportunity where you could get more specific. So I love specificity. That is my favorite thing to layer into a sales page, you know, in, in the editing phase, because specificity can make your, your sales copy really jump out. So. Here, instead of saying roll to roll, we can actually mention what those roles could be. So you're jumping from being the CEO to the customer service rep to the head of marketing and doing everything yourself. So that's a bit more powerful because you're already starting to be more tangible with what that jumping around from roll to roll is. You're implementing sales tactics, acquiring new customers, and you've got products that practically sell themselves, but you're barely breaking even and you're unsure where to turn. So here I've highlighted sales tactics. Again, we could be more specific here since this is not my space. I'm not exactly sure what you could replace this with, um, but you know, right? So 
um, I would encourage you to see if you could, like I did before with the roll to roll, could you mention a specific sales tactic that you know, based on voice of customer data that people are trying and they're either not having success with or they're unsure how to how to implement it, um, something like that. Um, and preferably that it's related to what you do to email mark email automation, because this is why they're on this page. Now, I've highlighted products that practically sell themselves, but you're barely breaking even. That just made me stop and it, it felt like a little bit like a conflict. So if their products are practically selling themselves, why are they barely breaking even? So I'm not sure if maybe this is a bit unclear or maybe it's said in a way that I don't understand, but it feels like if they're practically selling themselves, they're probably doing pretty good. Um, or do they think that their products should be selling themselves? Um, so there's a little bit of confusion here for me, a little bit of conflict. So I'll just encourage you to go back and, and make that clearer. And then I've highlighted unsure. You're unsure where to turn because in general, we want to use words that we use in everyday conversation. Now, personally, I wouldn't say I'm unsure about X. I would say I don't know or I'm not sure. So this is just something really small. But when you're reading, always when you're reading your sales copy, you read out loud and flag anything that doesn't feel natural. And for me, unsure doesn't feel natural. All right. Really important point, point coming up. Meanwhile, you've heard email marketing is being talked about as a big opportunity. And it's the secret sauce behind the success of brands like Taylor Stitch, Harry's, Beard Brand, MVMT, and the like. So for me, this was the most important point here. And I feel like we should lead with this. You've heard email marketing is a huge opportunity um, with this point. So this is the problem because they're already they're coming here with those keywords about email, email marketing automation. So they probably know this. They don't have to be convinced that email or email marketing is an opportunity. This is where they're, they're already here. So. I would consider reworking a version where I'm leading with this. You've heard email marketing is being talked out, talked about as a big opportunity, but X. So what's the problem? So they've heard that it's being talked about as a big opportunity, but they don't know how to implement it or they haven't been able to make their email marketing work or something like that. So you'll want to work on that headline, but I would encourage you to drop them in the middle of the action. This is called the battlefield principle. Um, so I would encourage you to, to lead with that, with that problem that email marketing is a big opportunity, but you haven't figured out how to make it work for you. Um, something like that. And actually along that line, we have it said here, you can't figure out how to apply it to any of your business. Now I highlighted this for a different reason because these people are in solution aware and they're um, in the intermediate level of sophistication, I wonder if, have they truly tried nothing? Um, so have they just, you know, wondered about email marketing and they haven't tried anything? Or, you know, this could be more specific to speak to what's going on right now. Are they trying this tactic, this tactic, this tactic, and so far it hasn't turned into sales? Like, what does that look like in their daily life? And again, you'll want to go back to your voice of customer data to use real examples that you found in the real world. And along the same lines is the, the questions underneath. How do you deliver the right message to the right person at the right time? That's something a copywriter would say, right? That's something I would say. But I'm I'm not sure if I'm hesitant if if that's how your customers would ask that question or is that marketing speak? That's how someone like me would ask that question, but how would your best prospects phrase those questions? What questions are they really asking about email automation? Um, so I would encourage you to go back to your VOC and pull those questions word for word. If they make sense, use them word for word. If they don't, then just modify them just a little bit so they make sense in your page. Um, but make sure you're, you're preserving that voice of customer. All right, let's move down to the, to the next section make email marketing work for your Shopify store. Now I've highlighted make email marketing work because it's a bit vague, right? You could really be more specific with this. What does make email marketing work mean? Does that translate into X percent more sales? Does it, you know, what does that mean for them? What is email marketing working in their business look like? So for example, I have over here, wouldn't it be nice if you can make 34% more sales from your automated automated emails? That's how much seven figure store beard brand sells their email marketing. That's just something I pulled from this section here. 
um, where you talked about there was a quote. It might be above here. Yeah, our email marketing efforts uh, accounts for 34% of our total sales. So we're not necessarily making a promise here, but we're just painting a picture of what that could look like. And you have data that a brand actually makes 34% more sales from their automated emails. That's much more specific. Um, and also a copywriting trick is phrasing the question in the negative um, is actually more likely to get you that internal yes. So instead of saying, do you want, you would say, don't you want? I really like that you're using um, vocabulary that these customers are probably using or these prospects are probably using. So retention strategies, repeat customers, customer lifetime value. I think down here you mentioned abandonment emails, cart abandonment emails. That's definitely something you want to do. Um, for anybody watching, you want to use the same vocabulary that your best prospects are using. And because these are in the intermediate um, intermediate to advanced level of sophistication, these are experienced Shopify owners, they're likely using those terms. All right, one comment I had was about the quotes. Um, these are just, they seem to be just quotes um, that some famous people have said about um, the value of email, email marketing or email campaigns. I would swap these out and use customer testimonials. Um, these are more powerful um, as a marketing person. When I look at you know, these types of quotes being used instead of actual customer testimonials, it makes me think that you don't have customer testimonials. And I've, I've read through the page to know that that's, that's not the case. You've actually been working with lots of brands. So just keep that in mind. Again, these people are in the solution awareness stage. They're already looking for email automation consultants, right? That's where your organic traffic is coming from. These are not the people that you have to do a hard sell on email marketing as a concept. They already believe in that. They're already looking for people to help. Um, so I don't think that's necessary. Again, always weigh everything I say against your voice of customer data. If you find out people are like, oh, will email marketing even really work? Then you definitely need to do that, create that belief in email marketing as a concept. And then that'll translate likely to a much longer page because you're doing um, you're creating that belief in the solution before you even ever get to you as as the product or you as the service provider. All right. I've I've also highlighted this. This is your secret money making marketing money making machine that literally puts the growth of your business on autopilot and can net you an extra 10 to 10 to 25 percent in revenue. That seems like a huge thing um, that's kind of buried in, you know, in the middle of the page. Um, it feels like we should be leading with this uh, or it should be higher up the page um, when you're talking about the potential of email marketing in their business, that you could realistically net an extra 10 to 25% of revenue with no additional work. This is, this is a big message. Um, that's the whole goal of autopilot is making money without any additional work. So it feels like this could go higher up the page when you're talking about the potential of email marketing. All right, just a small thing done for you from A to Z. You could definitely create a really cool package name here um, that speaks to what your what your best prospects want. Um, so you could just brainstorm something catchy, something really specific um, that just has more pizzazz than done from you for a, from A to Z. Okay, a side note. Normally on a sales page, we would not include um, any extra links because we don't want people clicking away from the sales page. Now, I, I realize that this is a home page, so it's a little bit different, but just take note that for a proper sales page, we would include these examples. So the case studies, testimonials, and data points, whatever you have that show that what you do works, we would include those, include those on the sales page as proof. Your how it works headline, we could definitely add more pizzazz here one of the biggest biggest edits you can make to really you know take your page to the next level when you're in the editing stage right is to go back to all of your crossheads your headlines and your crossheads and then just add more pizzazz to them so a how it works headline um, i call these sometimes lazy headlines they often are placeholder copy and like um, website templates and such they don't really do a whole lot for you they're just kind of there um, so, you know, all of your placeholder slash lazy headlines, definitely go back and add more pizzazz to those. Um, use some copywriting uh, formulas for headlines to brainstorm some different options. Here I just had, for example, schedule a free consultation and we'll map out your email, email 
automation strategy, um, which is not very fancy, right? But it's clear. Like if you schedule a free consultation or a free whatever you're going to call it, then this is what will happen. Um, so it doesn't have to be something super fancy or very appley. Um, it can be just something really specific and clear that communicates um, the value or the outcome to the customer, to what they care about. So as a small note here, these seem like steps. I might would consider adding step one, step two, step three, or phase one, phase two, phase three, just to um, reinforce that this is a process, right? And then again, with the CTA, um, the request a consultation to me feels a little bit like um, unobtainable. Like, why bother if I'm just requesting and I might not even get to talk to you? Now, I understand that you're screening your leads, um, but I would consider testing out a more clear, more obtainable kind of CTA, like schedule a consultation. And then you can just explain on the next page that they have to fill out the form first. And then if you're a good fit, you'll send them the, the booking link to schedule a consultation with you um, or you'll be in touch or whatever your your sales process is. Um, but just think about could you make this more could you make the CTA more approachable um, instead of signaling to them that that you're super choosy and you they may fill out the form and you're not even going to respond to them or something like that. They may not even get a chance to talk to you. So that's just something to think about. Um, that something that could be going through your customers or your bet, your prospects head, your visitors head. So we have the same kind of thing here with the Shopify stores I've worked with. Um, it's not a placeholder text, but it's not really doing anything for you. So I would encourage you to ask yourself, so what, why is this important? Why should they care about this? What's important about this little bit of information? Um, it could be that. Other people have worked with you. They have trusted you with their email automations or you've already gotten certain types of results with these clients. Um, it's really just a trust, kind of a trust, um, a trust factor, right? Um, so I've used on headlines for these kinds of things on other sales pages that are like, um, these brands have trusted me with their copywriting. You can too. I mean, something like that, that that's more communicative of the, of the point of this headline here. Um, for you, I had brainstormed something like these stores have already worked with me to turn emails into product sales. That's kind of the core of, you know, what you're trying to say. You've already worked successfully with these clients. Um, so that's something that you can work on here just to ask yourself. So what? Why is this important? And that'll really push um, push you to get to the core of what you're really trying to say there. All right, now we're moving into the section um, about you, you as a service provider. Um, so again, I would encourage you to push your headlines a little bit harder. Um, so who's behind deal with growth? Um, it doesn't really make me stop and, 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 and get me interested in reading about you. So I would consider trying a, like a value proposition crosshead here. Um, so I just pulled some stuff from your, your bio below. So something like I use email automation to lift your conversions, boost your sales and increase your profits. That's like the core of what you do. Um, so that's something you could consider using here. So they understand immediately before they even start reading about you. They're like, OK, who is this person who's going to lift my conversions, boost my sales and increase my profits? Um, so that um, is more benefit driven than what you're using right here. Just a small um, note about this link here. Again, we pref prefer not to have any external links. Um, this one's going to your about page. So I understand this is a, um, this is a homepage. Spoke here is going to their website. So I understand that this is probably supposed to give you a bit more authority or credibility. So instead of linking to that, um, I would encourage them not to encourage you not to cause them extra work. So just basically tell them what they need to know. So a former mar a former marketing slash tech guy at Spoke the X, um, tell them what kind of company it is or tell them what you achieved there. Um, so what again, ask yourself, so what? Why is this bit of information important to them? What are you really trying to say? I've highlighted solo. Um, I'm not sure if this hurts you or help you. So it's just something to think about. Um, is, is being a solo e-commerce consultancy like that you're working by yourself? Does that cause prospects to doubt your capabilities? Um, do they want to work with solo providers? Um, that's something that you'll have to, to test out with your best prospects to see um, whether or not 
you should keep that or eliminate it. And in general, if it's hurting you, then I would take it out, right? I've also highlighted honest here. I just found it interesting, honest growth, um, because I didn't know what that meant. If it's something, it may mean that it needs to be explained. So what is honest growth? How is it different from other types of growth? Um, so I was just curious about what role that played and like what's going on with that voice of customer data what are why are they concerned with honest growth is this something that they've that they've mentioned that they want um i think it's an interesting concept i just don't quite understand its role um so if you're if your customers do then no problem then you've got nothing to do there but if they don't then you may have to do some explaining here and the following sentence right now i'm working with x i would cut the right now it makes it sound like this is temporary that right now you're working with x but tomorrow you might be working with doing something different and then just change i'm working to i work with um, one thing i noticed we're missing from this so direct to consumer brands and retailers to improve their conversion sales and profits with email automation we're missing shopify um, shopify stores so not just any brands and retailers you're working with ones who you Shopify, right? And then we're also missing those qualifiers about the figures. So making five to six figures and want to make X figures, for example. So we're just missing those bits of information. They just make it more clear who you work with. So you that you don't spend time on the phone with people who are not the right fit for you. All right. The next bit I've highlighted is comes right after your headshot. I don't believe this is a headline in Okay, it's not. So it's just kind of buried. So this is a really powerful case study. Let me hop back over. And I think it deserves its own, its own section where you're talking about the results that you get for your clients because that's important. That's going to make them want to work with you because what you do gets results. That's a huge proof thing. So if you have case studies, testimonial data points about how effective your services are, those you definitely want those on your sales page because those are the proof um, behind all your claims. So you could turn this into a case study section that proves what you do works. And you could use something similar for your headline. My client X now makes 20% of his revenue from automated e email campaigns. If you can mention your client by name. If this is anonymous, then you could say one of my clients or um, you could mention the industry, um, men's health brand, um, is now generating something like that. So if it's anonymous, you got to do some workarounds, but if it's not, um, then I would highly recommend mentioning the client because that gives you more credibility. And then of course, you're just going to go into that, um, case study, giving them enough information to show, um, you know, where they were starting from what you did and what the outcome was. All right. Well, some of the FAQs, I was a little bit concerned that they might've been too early. So things about talking about software, um, that might be something that you discuss on your follow-up call um, so as not to overload people with things they don't even really need to be thinking about yet. Um, so that's something that only you can answer because I don't um, have all the details on your best prospect and I don't know what your sales process looks like. Um, but I would just ask, ask yourself, like, does this need to be included right now? Like, is this something that can come later um, in a one on one discussion when they've already like been bought into working with you? Because um, we're talking about tools and that's not something we've really talked about on the sales page. Um, we're not selling them tools. We're selling them a, a service solution. Right. And I know that's part of your service solution, um, but it feels a little bit out of place now. The last few FAQs feel like important messages to go elsewhere on the page that I don't I wouldn't like to see them buried in the FAQ section. So a lot of time this happens, um, especially when I'm writing sales pages, when I'm editing, I'll go back to the FAQs and I'll realize I have some really important stuff there that doesn't need to be buried there. It needs to be elsewhere on the page. So something about this delivery time, three to five weeks. Um, I could see this being a kind of a closing type message that's, you know, at the end of the page where you're talking about, um, you know, how soon can they start seeing results? Um, you know, in five weeks, could they already start seeing some sales roll in? For example, um, that's a huge uh, what we call five, five inch, five mile benefit. This is more of the, yeah, well, you could consider it either one, right? 
you know, five weeks could be your five inches benefit. Like in five weeks, they're going to already start seeing some sales numbers from their automated emails. Five mile benefit might be what does that transformation look like in 12 months, for example. Another important message that's buried here is about expectations. Um, so how much of a revenue lift can I expect? I would pull this into the, into its own section. Um, when you're talking about the power of email marketing, maybe even before you get into yourself as a provider, that you're you're just setting those expectations. Like on average, you could see uh, a 10 to 15 percent revenue uh, growth in revenue, but that that seems to be a major issue um, when you're talking about the power or the potential of of doing email marketing for their businesses. All right. Uh, the money back guarantee, again, I'm not sure this needs to be talked about now. Um, this could be something that you discuss in a follow up in the strategy session or when you're closer to signing a contract, when you're in your proposal kind of presentation and proposal meeting where you talk about you set those expectations. Um, or you could have some kind of disclaimer on your site. Um, it doesn't feel like it's necessary for this type of, of service. Um, yeah, those are just my initial thoughts. Like for a course, of course, for a digital product, of course. For done for you services, it feels like this could be either too soon or not kind of right for the home page, the sales page here. Um, so that's just something to think about. Um, is there a better place to talk about the money back guarantee or the lack of uh, money back guarantee? I don't know. This could be a thing that makes you stand out, um, but you'll you could present it in a different way. Give it its own section. Uh, like, for example, what have I done here? I can show you an example really quickly if I go over here. So this is a service. And of course, I don't have uh, a typical money back guarantee, but I do make a promise. Um, so if I can't find at least five foundational ways to improve your sales page copy, then I'll give you a refund. So I'm saying that they're going to get X. And if I don't give them X, then they'll get a full refund. Now, I understand the marketing space and I know that you can't offer a money. It's risky to offer a money back guarantee because there is so much more to increasing conversions than what you're going to do for them. So you could, you know, look for a different way to position yourself. And instead of not offering a money back guarantee, you offer a certain kind of guarantee. You off offer a professional and ethical guarantee or um, a service satisfaction guarantee. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's a way to position that in a positive way as a some sort of guarantee, even if it's not a money back guarantee. Now, when it comes to your portfolio, I would recommend not making your prospect do unnecessary work. Um, so give them what they need to take action right away. Like we said, if you have relevant case studies, data points, testimonials, etc., that should be included on the page. Don't make them go hunt for that. Um, if your if your goal is to get them to take action. Now, if your goal is to get them to request your portfolio, then you might do it this way. So I would give them what they need to know and just take all this off about getting your portfolio or put it on a FAQ section or a different page, but not on your core sales page. Now, this is a bit about people not reading emails anymore. I had a few concerns with this. Again, it's buried in the FAQ section. And this could be a huge barrier for your audience. So if it is, it needs to come way before, because if they don't believe that email marketing is a solution, they're not going to make it this far for you to even um, overcome this. So if this is a true barrier for them and they're like, people aren't reading emails anymore, email marketing doesn't work. This needs to go a lot higher on the page where you're talking about email marketing as the solution uh, in general before you even introduce your stuff as a product or a service package. Um, so that needs to go a whole lot higher. But knowing what I know about your customer, which is they are searching for Shopify email marketing consulting, Shopify marketing consultant, um, that makes me think that they don't believe this because otherwise they're not they wouldn't be searching for those terms. Um, so I would just ask you, you know, is this really an objection for your um, target customer? If it's not, get rid of it. It's not backed by voice of customer data. 
Um, but if it is, then it needs to go higher on the page before um, before people have the opportunity to be like, nah, this is not going to work. I'm just going to exit. Now we've um, gotten to the end of the page where your final CTA is. And I'm going to remind you what I said earlier about the um, five inch, five mile benefit. You could do more of a, a closer type section. So for example, five weeks from now, you could already be making more product sales from automated email campaigns. That starts to paint the picture of what that tomorrow looks like. Um, what's their business gonna look like in two months or five weeks or et cetera. I would use the closer section to get them invested um, and reminded of what that better tomorrow is. Um, what does that look like for them? What's going to make them be like, I have to act now. I have to talk to this guy now because this is going to transform my business. So that's something to think about. Something that's still missing on this page um, or is sufficient proof, I believe. Um, so if you're wanting this page to drive action, you know, proof. If you have proof, prove it. Prove everything you say. Um, so, you know, once you've introduced yourself as the, the service solution, then you got to start backing up with proof. So we talked about we talked about that one case study that you can use. Why not include three case studies to show that what you do really works um, where you're having you have data points. You're you know, you're showing what the outcome is. Um, you're including those logos like you've worked with these clients. Um, you have testimonials from those clients. Um, if you don't have those, collect those because those are huge. Like you're wanting to create credibility. Um, and right now, um, there's not a whole lot of proof. We had the one slight case study that was kind of buried. Um, but, you know, the rest that there was no testimonials. There was no other like data points about what you've done for your clients. Um, and I, I feel like you have that kind of stuff. So make sure that you're including that. Whatever you're hoping to give them in your portfolio, include that. Uh, make, but make sure it's a core part of the, the sales message. You don't want to just include things to have them included. They should everything should earn its spot on the page. All right. That brings us to the end of this mini review. Now, this is a much uh, smaller, lightweight version of what I do in a full sales page review. Um, I wanted to focus on what Jeremy was struggling with the most, which was a voice of customer research and being specific. Um, so that's what we focused on. But there is a whole um, lot of other stuff that you can look at when you're reviewing a sales page. And one of the things is really diving into that foundation. So what the offer is, that's something we didn't talk about here, um, that that definitely could be improved. Your offer, your promise, your big idea, you know, how you're, you're pricing, depending on what you're selling, um, and then your framework. So using a proven framework, that works well for sales pages to making sure you're hitting the right points, uh, that you have enough proof that you're, you're telling the right story, that you're painting a picture of that better tomorrow. And then you can dive into the individual copy elements like we did here. You know, are you communicating the so what's the, the value, the benefits, the outcomes? Um, are you supporting everything you claim with proof, with evidence? Are you being clear? Are you being specific? Are you really reflecting those customer experiences back to your your best prospects when they read your page? Can they see themselves on the page? That is in a gist what I do in a full sales page review.